Hallo? Ich bin hier. Ich bin hier. Mach mich hell. Dankeschön. Hello everyone, welcome everyone to another one of my videos. This time we are going to talk about a topic no one has ever talked about on the whole landscape of YouTube music videos, which is our analog EQs scams it's a complete new topic and you have never heard of it and it's so exciting and oof, i'm so excited to talk about it oh, ah, okay no one else have thought about this yet no this is not what we are going to talk about today because it's kind of lame you've seen a lot of videos like this already i don't know what's the point of making these videos because dan Rorel has already talked about most of this crap however i wanna take this opportunity to talk about a similar topic which is are skeuomorphic interfaces a relic of the past and that's also a related topic because one argument that people often have against analog looking eqs like bx console ssl 4000e is that the workflow of it is just not as good as with a plugin like obvious example proq because obviously in proq you can just say Boom, filter at a certain frequency, at a certain gain, with a certain Q factor, all just, you know, with one little move with your mouse, you don't have to use a single brain cell to adjust it. You can just bam. And there is also no point in people saying, oh, but you can make the broader strokes in an analog looking EQ. No, you can also do this in Pro-Q. You can just do this if you want to. You just don't, because music has gotten more modern and sometimes we just need the finer ones, the finer controls to really make our music fit when it's getting pretty dense. There was not as dense music as nowadays in the 80s. You might be wondering, why did I even obtain this plugin? It is a pretty expensive plugin by Brainworks. I don't know how much it costs, 250 or whatever. I got it for sale when it was 20 euro. Uh, you know Brainworks always has these ridiculous cells that just show that the plugins are not really worth 250 euro and I jumped on one of these sales because I wanted to find out if there can be an analog plugin that actually fascinates me if I was missing out on something the whole time and I found out that I wasn't. It's just a pretty lame experience. Like, okay, let's, let's move some knobs on this beat. I just hate it. Like, what is the point? First of all, you have to find out which of these knobs is which before you can actually use them. And then, okay, this one is labeled. It's kind of like something between Q factor and slope. At least that's what the label suggests. This is apparently gain and this is frequency. Like, okay, you can see dB and kilohertz. It is labeled, yeah, but it's not the first thing you see when you are moving the knobs. So it's not as intuitive as Pro-Q and no one can tell me it is. It, it, it just isn't. Let me give you a good example for that. Like, let's say this. Oh, of course, I cannot double click. Okay, CTL click to go back. Like this label suggests that this is actually a slope, right? So in Pro-Q, if you wanted to make such an edgy curve, you would have to increase the slope and then it would be an edgy curve. What is this? EQ curve analyzer. Now, obviously, there is a weird curve going on here. So if you turn off analog mode, it at least flattens out between the channels a little bit. And then TMT inside, you can't do anything against it, I guess. It is just various uh, random equalization presets and there's also some noise going on. I don't know if it's because of the built-in compressor or if there is like noise fed into the stream every single time you add this plugin. I have no idea. I don't want to know. Anyway, let's add some gain on this filter and turn up this thing and we see it is definitely not a slope. It is just the Q factor. So it is not even labeled correctly. This is not what it's doing. It is just something different. Maybe it is true to the nature of the original interface of whatever this tries to emulate, but I don't care. I just want to use it. I also don't care about like the whatever these fucking controls are. It's just I just want to know what is the signal chain like. Just draw the modules in the sequence in which they are used and not make buttons like that and don't make weird screw knobs and it just sucks and there are enough people who talk about it so let's not waste any more time on that and instead talk about skeuomorphic interfaces in general just like i wanted to skeuomorphic interfaces in this particular case they are just making the workflow worse because we already know a better workflow pro q 
But there can also be examples of plugins where it is actually cool that there are skeuomorphic interfaces. Echo Boat, for example, one of my favorite plugins out there. It is a delay that has a frequency shifter in the feedback loop. In Bitwig, you can emulate that a little bit by just making a delay plus object and into the feedback path you put a frequency shifter and that is pretty much the same thing as this except that it does not have the smear parameter and you would also have to add a filter uh, and yeah I think that's it maybe the L of O section yeah but this has a better workflow it is just a bit more streamlined than setting it up with delay plus every time and that's why I like it and I like it for the interface because these knobs, they remind me a little bit of something that you would see maybe in a hospital on a wall somewhere. You know, one of these weird gadgets that are hanging on the walls and you are asking yourself, what is this even for? It looks so scientific and physical. And that's what this interface always gave me as a vibe. And that's just something that you cannot get from an interface that is just looking flat. Flat interfaces are cool. What I like about flat interfaces is that you can resize them. Like Valhalla Supermassive, you can resize it with the aspect ratio being kept. And the plugins that I programmed myself, like Nell, you can even move them without respecting the aspect ratio. Sometimes it looks a little bit funny, but you can do it. And I think it's pretty useful because there are multiple configurations that actually make sense. Like you can make it look a little bit more like this. That would make sense. You can make it look more like this. Would also make sense. I personally like it mostly rectangular like this maybe. Yeah, that's pretty cool about interfaces that are flat. Uh, flat interfaces can do that because you can basically just code how they should act. So the code already says there should be an arc and a smaller arc inside. And the tick should be drawn here with the line starting from here, but you only draw the end of it. That's what the code says and that's why it is drawn like that. And it doesn't matter what the bounds of the windows are because you can always say, okay, draw this arc with a width of this uh, hitbox and when the width of it changes then the arc is also painted differently and it will not, never look pixelated or anything because it always just draws itself from scratch every time you resize the interface that's why flat looks are useful it also speeds up development time to make flat interfaces and i think that's the reason why we see a lot of flat interfaces out there because it's not that skeuomorphic interfaces look worse than flat ones but they are just easier to develop, especially if you want to have it cost effective. You would just want flat interfaces because then you don't have to pay so much for your development time and you can make more money with your plugin. Obviously my plugins are free, so when I decided for flat looks, I did it because I just wanted my plugins to get out there. I was just excited and I didn't want to waste time drawing images first. But some people like to do that. For example, Sonic Charge with EchoBot drew these beautiful knobs or whoever was the designer of this plugin drew those knobs and I think it really pays off because it has a certain vibe. It gives you an aesthetic. So again, and why do I respect this aesthetic and why do I not respect this aesthetic? I respect this aesthetic because no one has found a better workflow for Echo Boat yet. And if there was a better workflow for Echo Boat, a workflow that is even more streamlined than this, then at that point I would say, okay, maybe it is time to lay Echo Boat to the side, get the new plugin and have a workflow that is even better for the same sound. And if there are new developers out there still releasing stuff that looks like Echo Boat, even though the new thing has already been out, then I would say that's kind of cringe. But analog looking EQs, they have already been out for so long and they are still not learning from the fact that Pro-Q exists. I just don't understand why. Maybe, okay, you know, there are target groups. This just caters to people who are so old that they just can't stand looking at flat interfaces. They just want to look at something familiar. They just want to feel home, even when sitting in front of the screen. That's understandable. Well, what's not so understandable that is that it's also catering to people who fall for scams. And it's just undeniable. Some people are sitting in front of their computers watching YouTube. And then there is a YouTuber who has a um, mixing desk in the background or a huge modular system. System. So the viewer thinks, okay, this person has, must have made a lot of money making music, otherwise they couldn't have afforded all that crap. So they must be right about whatever they are saying and if they say that an analog emulation is cool, then it's cool. Maybe it's an affiliate even and they wouldn't notice it, so they would buy the analog looking gear and it is not the best thing that they could have done with their money. And at that point I would say 
it is a scam and I think that's messing with the reputation of skeuomorphic interfaces, unfortunately. Skeuomorphic interfaces, I, I don't think they will ever fall out of fashion because we as humans, we just want something to look a little bit real sometimes. When things look real, we feel connected to it on a more natural level. The moment we allow scams to be part of the realness, it is not real anymore and the flatness becomes the new realness. And people are mistaking this with reality. People think flatness is just real uh, or the, the realest way to make plugins, but it is actually just the scams that make it the real thing. That's just the message that I want to get out. So be open about schoomorphic interfaces. Schoomorphic interfaces can be cool, but only if they don't obscure the workflow. That's my opinion about it.